fine. And so is Ms. Herring. Okay. And we, She's anyone in else traffic. wish to make public comment before we start the meeting? If not, we'll move into the items for discussion, the first of which is a proposal for adopt a classroom. Mrs. Mola. Hi there. Um, welcome. Thank you for having me again. I'm looking to propose um, to tr do crowdsourcing like I've done before. I've done donor shoots in the past. This time I'd like to try adopt a classroom. It's set up just, it's, it parallels donor shoots. It's a little different. Um, it's crowdsourcing and we're using online support to help purchase iPads for the classroom. We can accept donations. Um, the difference is that 100% of it would go towards the classroom, whereas before with donor shoots there was like a little fee that went with it. Um, and since there are no fees, if you don't raise enough to purchase like two iPads or whatever our request is, then you could purchase something. You could purchase one iPad if you didn't raise enough money from two iPads. So it's set up a little bit differently, but it's made um, so there's less wait time, there's less restrictions, and there's fewer steps to go through. So with your approval, I'd love to try using that crowdsourcing, social media, parents, friends, help um, to try to get two more iPads into the classroom. Are there any questions? Question? No. Well, thank you very much. And if you can mark your calendar, I was here um, in January about the penguins and our trip to Antarctica and Skyping, and we're going to be doing that again in December, on December 20th at 1 p.m. If your calendars are free, come and join us at Grass. Okay. Thank you very much. The next proposal is the AP French Language and Cultural proposal. Mrs. Hello. Um, so, do I have to press the? Yes, you need to press. Yes. There we go. Okay. So, um, I'm proposing AP French language and culture, and uh, the course it would be very similar in the setup to the AP Spanish language and culture. The test for all AP languages is the same format, regardless of the language. So they would be um, doing the same sort of tasks, uh, those readings with questions, audience with questions. There's an email response, a multi-source essay, a telephone conversation, and a, presenta a presentational speaking, which is a cultural comparison uh, that the students need to do in the test. And I am proposing the book Thames. I can bring that up and pass that around to you if you like. Um, that uh, the book and the workbook combined really take the students through all of the tasks. Uh, it's set up with six units, each based on the global themes of the, of the course. Um, and. Uh, the proposal does include uh, not only the cost of the textbooks, but cost of curriculum writing and also the cost for training one of the French teachers. It's a one-week summer course. Any questions? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So um, would we still offer French 5? We'd like to still offer it for the students. Uh, we did take a survey of the French and German students last year to see what their interest, level of interest was. There was more of a level of interest for French. Uh, there were about 75% of the students who were in French 4 last year and French 5 that year who said that they would have or would take uh, French if AP was offered, or only 25% said that they would not take AP, um, which was the exact opposite of the German. The, the German students did not have much interest in taking the AP course. So we thought we would at least offer the course. Um, I think one of the things that might have encouraged the French students is the fact that there had been the cyber French AP offered the one year, I think knowing that that had been offered one year when French 5 was not offered might have added to their interest, the fact that there might be a possibility of taking it. And so with the numbers, I mean, 
looking at like this year's numbers and what's in French four for next year, we would it support having both classes? There's 21 students in French four this year, so I'm not sure that it would support two levels. I think what would happen is we would see where the interest is, and if the majority interest falls in the French five, then we would offer that. If the majority interest falls in AP, then we would offer that. There would not be. There's never enough French and German for students to support both a level five and an AP. So then, also, because it says we're not dropping any class, but if we offer AP French, we would be dropping French five. Well, right. only if there are a number of students, who, if the majority of students want the French five instead of the AP. Okay, so, so we would wait and see. French so we're going to offer it, and then if enough people Right. Wouldn't it be better though just to offer one thing and go with it instead of offering both and splitting the numbers? I don't know. I just think mm -hmm. if we're going one way, it should be. If, and if you think you don't have enough numbers to support both, I don't. I don't know. I just think then you're setting it up for a split and not mm -hmm. enough for both. I, I guess along those lines, I, I would hate to see us, you know, pay to start this course and then we find out the numbers fall the other way. We don't offer it anyway. <laughs> you know right. what I mean? Well, there would not be anything. No money would be paid out until that course would be, the students would be enrolled in that course anyway. Everything else would happen uh, next school year. I mean, over the summer or the books would be purchased for next year. So nothing would be purchased or paid for until the course is, the, until there are students enrolled in the course. Have you ever had students in French 5 take the AP exam? We've had a few. Um, usually there's maybe one every couple of years who take that. Uh, and usually they pass. There's usually any student who takes it. Usually they're more motivated students who take that. And um, they usually get at least a three, sometimes a four. Um, that's the same thing with German. That's why we were always very reluctant to offer a French AP or a German AP because there's not enough students to allow for both a French and a German AP. And the curriculum of AP being as it is, there does not allow for students to learn other cultural things that are currently presented in French 5 and German 5. And that's why we've always been reluctant to offer it. So you want to offer it now because of the students have expressed the interest in? We've been asked for many, many years. We have been asked to explore French 5 and German 5. Mm -hmm. um, and so we had we had a survey to see student interest, and there was student interest in French AP. So that is why we're considering offering it. Did the students who say that they don't want, wouldn't want to take the AP, was it that they were apprehensive about the level of difficulty? Because it sounds like I knew that the German, German 5 students mm -hmm. have taken the AP exam mm -hmm. and have done very well yes. on it. Um, I'm just wondering if those students would be more inclined to take it if you explain to them exactly what the difficulty level of the course is and maybe you show them how historically students have taken the regular course and taken the AP exam and have done well. I think they'd be less inclined to take the AP course if we talked about the level of difficulty of the course uh, and also the fact that there are certain elements that are currently taught in AP French and, or sorry, in French 5 and German 5 that would not be able to be done in a uh, AP course because of the content of the course, because of the college board's requirements for the AP course. Mm -hmm. So then I'm not sure that this is really something that people want to do. I mean, you have the interest, but I think it, I think they do need to be mm -hmm. have it explained to them what an AP course entails. They should never go into an AP course not knowing that. So, I mean, if your sense is that they're going to not want to do it. Right. Well, I don't know how to say this. Um, this has been something that it has been requested for years. I've come to board meetings 
and the board has requested this. They wanted the AP French and AP German. Um, we took the survey of the students to see if there were interests, and there was at least enough interest in AP. Um, so that's why we're offering it. And if I can just add, we've been having this discussion for a couple of years back in the land and the last We have been encouraging the department to offer the AP French. And we did ask, see if the students are interested. If we have interested students, we should be offering that AP French class. And if we are offering that, does it make sense to offer the French font? So these are good questions. Mm -hmm. Because if we are going to offer the AP French, that competition between the two may not be in anybody's best interest. So we just weren't willing to um, get rid of the AP or get rid of the French five until we saw this year what the level of interest was for the current students in French four to see if they would want to. Also, we would like to remain open that students in the future could take French 5, could still have the choice of French 5 or AP French, so that if in the future students would prefer French 5, that that would be offered to them instead of the AP. But we could see wherever the interest lies. That's why we are not interested in totally um, dropping French 5. Now, I don't want you to get me wrong. I would, I would really like to see the AP course myself. I just would, you know, want to also make sure that the interest is going to be there. But if you said that the money's not going to be spent until... Well, no money would be spent. The course, the curriculum writing would take place during the summer. The course, the AP French course, is offered only in, those are only offered in the summer. And no textbooks would be purchased until uh, the summer also. So we would be able to see if we have it in the course of study, we would be able to see if students are interested in uh, taking AP French or French 5. And then we would know, okay, well, these students are not interested in it, or the majority are not interested in it, and so then we don't have, we don't offer AP French next year, but then if they are, if the majority is, then we would go forward. This is good. Yeah, I think offering the AP course is, is great. I mean, we're trying to have a higher level of rigor, and the students generally who go take a fifth year of a language are motivated students who want a, a high level of rigor. And I think the, one of the other advantages of having the AP class, when you take the test, you can use that when you go to college to show where you place without having to take another, like an SAT two, which are, are very different. I actually think the students would do better on the AP test than on the SAT subject test in French or Spanish. I think they do better on the AP test. So I mean, I think this is a good thing. My only concern is offering both. You're going to split the numbers. And I think if we're going to go with AP, then maybe we should just go with AP and say that's it. My, my other question is, will it affect uh, what's taught in French 4? Because you know, my understanding of the, the AP language is, right, is that you're, it's not so much grammar, it's more focusing on communication, and you need to have the grammar completed by the end of French 4, and I don't know if that's how our course is in French. I don't know if that's how it's written. I believe that the majority of the grammar is in the Rebecca, French. can you turn your microphone on, please? I believe that the majority of the grammar is taught in French 4, and that's how it is in Spanish. All major verb tenses, all major grammar concepts are taught in levels one through four of Spanish, and then that's why the students can choose either Spanish five or AP Spanish, um, because they have had enough grammar to go on to the AP if they like. And those who don't want it can take the Spanish five. Yeah, so that's good, there wouldn't be any change to, to French four. Yeah. I, I also think, you know, the AP language class is written, I mean, I know there are certain themes that they have to cover and communication skills, but I feel, still think that the curriculum is open enough that teachers can incorporate different cultural aspects. Um, that, that it would still give people a lot, there's still a lot enough freedom, I think, in the class. So I, I think it would be a great thing for the kids to have the AP have that higher level. Could you not do the cultural things that they might miss in the, from the French 5? Could you do them after? 
you know, from that time period after you take your AP exam in May. I yes, there, are some, there is some time that those, some of those cultural elements could be done at that time, yes. So I, I would really like to see them encouraged to, to challenge themselves, and they already have the ability because, like you already said, the kids have taken the AP exam and they've done well, and those AP credits can really pay off for them mm -hmm. in college, so if it's possible. My only fear is that, the, and that is uh, what has always <coughs> been, is losing the students who don't want the AP, and that's going to be, and that's why it has always been nice that we have the French Five and the German Five as opposed to an AP, because those students can take, still take the AP exam, but those students who didn't want the AP don't have that you know, really is you're, you're really teaching, almost teaching to the test and the types of activities and things that you're doing and it, it does not allow for as much freedom as having a level five course. So based on the feedback, mm -hmm. it does sound like if we are requesting an AP French that we offer AP French mm -hmm. and not a and not French five. If everyone agrees, it seems to me that if we're going to offer that, we will get more students to take it rather than not take it. And then, as Mrs. Cullen pointed out, those wonderful, rich experiences that you talked about, culturally, we can still teach that. You can still have those experiences for those students. So the committee is in agreement that we run AP, or the proposal to run AP, without the French Five. My only concern would be what would be the minimum number of students that you would allow into the French, the AP French course, and still let the course run. Because a few years ago, when there were Excuse only... Excuse me, Rebecca, um, that's a conversation for her. Okay. When we're doing our program studies and we're doing the scheduling, they're the conversations that we have with the administration. Okay. So at this point, I think we recommend AP French. Okay. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think... I guess from the, from the feedback, I it, it sounds to me like the five course is um, something that the students seem more interested in and the teachers seem more interested in. I almost feel like um, I feel like it's it almost sounds like it's the board that's trying to push an AP course and then they don't really want the AP course and so I, I don't want to force it on them and then we have students that don't actually want to take the, the course and would prefer to take the five. It sounds like we've been missing out by taking the AP. So, I mean, my, my personal opinion is, yeah, I don't feel like we have enough to go forward with this, with, with the information that we have, because it doesn't sound like the interest level for this is as high as the interest level for the five class. Well, yeah, I think it is 75% of students were interested in the AP. I, I thought she was saying that the more they know about the AP class, they're going to she was like, become a design project. That if they knew about the bridge. But we want them to experience that. And I think at least for this year, let's try offering the AP French and see how that goes. It's, if 75% of the students are interested in taking 10%, or 20%, I can see not running it. But if 75% of the students are saying, you know, yes, I'd be interested in taking the AP course, at least we can run it this year and see how it goes. So then are you going to take off the five course for this year? Well, I would recommend taking off the five, otherwise you're not going to have competing. Because students, you're not going to have enough numbers. Want, right, we would like to run it and see how that goes. But certainly, I mean, 75% 70, to me is a go. Yeah, it sounds like there's a lot of interest in it. So yeah, I, I would always rather see them encouraged to do the AP. I mean, they can do it. Um, and they should, if they have the opportunity to take an AP class, they should, and it's good for the whole school um, to have those APs. I can understand what you're saying, that there are going to be some kids who are discouraged, but right now there's 75% of them who are saying yes, or that they're interested, and, um, sorry, we're right back to Wardrobe, yeah, oh, um, as you said, that I, I think some, as you go along, other students might say, I, oh, I, I can do that, you know, I can, and they'll be, um, at that age, I was thinking about it earlier, at that point, they will have already, students at that level will have already taken other AP courses and they'll, they'll be familiar with um, the work and, and know that they can do it. So, um, like Dr. Scheid said, if it were only 10% of the students who said, I would, I would do AP, and maybe 
be different, but there's an awful lot of them who said yes. And that's why we're not requesting AP German, because there was only a 25% interest in AP German, 75% said they would not go on to the next level if AP was the only offering. So that's why we're offering the French, there was interest in that, but not the AP German. Comments? No. Okay. Thank you very much. We'll move on to the health and physical education proposal for cyber physical education. Ms. Weiger and Mrs. Spirsch. Good evening. My name is Lisa Wagner and I'm the health and phys ed coordinator. My colleagues, as, long, as well as Kara, um, are going to offer, we want to propose courses in the health and PE department. Uh, tonight we will be presenting courses that will be offered only for 11th and 12th grade. With these new proposals, our students will have the opportunity in selecting their classes. So we're going to start off with the summer PE. Good, good evening, everyone. Uh, this is really a revision proposal. It's taking our current 12th grade cyber PE course, which is a full year course, and it's, a, I think, mentioned it's only available for 12th graders but we're looking to take that course and divide it actually into two separate semester courses and offering it to both 11th and 12th grade students so i mean seen the proposal so i didn't know if anybody had questions about the plan so by making it into a semester class because right now it's supposed to be two it's a it's a quarter credit so it's supposed to be two classes per six day cycle correct for the entire year so would it be four classes it, per six it day would cycle? actually sorry yeah. it would actually be three classes per six day cycle we could do the math of two out of six isn't really getting to two point two five five credits we kind of round it up i guess <coughs> a bit, as a school um so we're going to three classes six days a cycle for the point two five before it was actually it should be a third yes right? sorry sorry yeah. yes okay right. uh, and, and so and what's the advantage of there because there are some students that have only semester science classes with the lab because with, aren't most of them are a year long i'm just wondering they are a year long but with the other it's to keep it consistent with the other proposals that you're going to hear tonight with the other proposals that you're going to hear there is a switch to moving 11th and 12th grade PE entirely from a full year experience to semester-based experiences, which will allow students then to meet their, side, their PE credits in their junior year potentially by taking a semester 0.25 credit in the fall and then one in the spring, and that will coincide nicely then with their lab sciences as well. Okay, so then if they're not taking a lab science their senior year, they would have an extra time, time to take other classes of interest. Um, is there discussion for athletes to, um, during their season, um, to not have to take PE? I know there are a lot of school districts that do that. No. <laughs> we have not discussed that. <laughs> I wouldn't say we have not discussed it. But. <laughs> Are there other comments or questions on this cyber? How many students do you currently have in your grade cycle? Currently have 22 students. Any other questions? So, will they still have to have it get put it into their schedule, the cyber PE, as a period, or can they do it entirely outside of school? They can do it entirely outside of school. It's it's not. It's still not going to be allowing for going beyond the typical credit value, can't be an extra class that's added into their schedule. Uh, but we, the way we have it working right now, if a student has it scheduled for first period or last period and they're a senior in good standing and they're eligible for late arrival or early release, they do not have to be in school to do the work. As well as students who are involved in the high school enrichment program at Fox County, they don't have to be in school because of the way the school the schedule works at Fox versus our six day cycle. It makes it a little difficult for them to consistently be. Do they have room. to come to the what's it called the cap room? The cap room. They they do not. They yeah, but do all the other students who are the in other school? students who are in school do come to the cap room this year to to um, work on their courses. Okay, thank you. Thank you. The next is another health and PE proposal. Mr. Nunbella. Uh, 
I was uh, considering wearing one of my official jerseys tonight, but I decided against it because I maybe to get uh, some booze from the crowd, so <laughs> I'm going to put that away. Uh, considered uh, a new new course offering, officiating and umpiring, uh, just looking at some, some options, giving the students another opportunity for a, a different type of class. They're going to be highly active doing uh, some of the sports, but they're also going to get an opportunity to learn the basics of mechanics and rules for, for their sporting events with our community, with Deep Run Valley Sports Association, Pender Little League. Uh, we have many opportunities for our students to officiate umpire games. I, I communicated with someone from Deep Run Valley and they said they have probably over 125 games a summer and more that they, they need to assign uh, umpires to and a lot of times they use high school students Penders Little League is in the same boat where they have their intramurals, their weekend uh, tournaments. So there are many opportunities for uh, our, our students to uh, umpire and officiate games. So uh, it's a great side job. You can go bus tables at a local restaurant or maybe get on a playing field and be part of the game, give back to your community a little, little bit and officiate and get a little bit of money as well. So. That's kind of the proposal if you have any questions. Is there an age limit at which they can start this activity well, officially? I don't mean as okay. a course. Uh, for the little leagues, they, they uh, allow uh, kids to umpire probably 12 year old, 12 years and up. So let's say a 12 year old kid playing little league, he might umpire the eight, nine year old games. But we have a lot of times there are high school kids umpiring. The little league game and even the, the, uh, the big field. Uh, PIAA, you have to be 18 to take the course and pass the course. So I could not certify them for this course, but I could give them the basics uh, of the mechanics, and then when they turn 18, they can take the PIAA course, and I can teach, I can tell them all the steps that they need to do once that once that is achieved. I just. I think it's an excellent idea for all the reasons that you said, um, and it would, it would teach the students, it, I think it goes along well with our SEL program too, it's going to teach them leadership and how to deal with a little bit of adversity. Con <laughs> yeah, a little conflict like, resolution, yeah. just communication. <laughs> those kinds of things, those are all valuable, and I do, of course my children have been involved in Deep Run for years, and I know they're always looking for um, people to officiate, so. I think this is like the perfect scenario to have students from our high school. It's a great community for, for this to be an opportunity. Mm -hmm. So thank you. So this is, what do you say, it's just for baseball? No, we're looking, we're looking at, I like football because I officiate football, but I also involve baseball. But the, class, the course we're looking at, baseball, softball, uh, football, volleyball, basketball. So touch on a lot of sports. Uh, in a deep run, they, they do the basketball program during the winter time. So, a great opportunity for for the kids to get involved, officiating there. Uh, I'm been a football official since 2009, and in our chapter, our Bucksmont chapter, I'm probably one of the younger guys. So, we're always looking for younger officials, trying to get younger people involved. So, if we can get some kids to start when they're 18, 20, and they get involved, start doing middle school, high school games, and start you know, climb the ladder, it's, it's, I think it's a great opportunity. Any other comments or questions on this proposal? I, just, I have one comment in general related to all of them. Are these, all of these proposals will be what's offered to 11th and 12th graders? Dr. Scheid, so this is yes. replacing what we have as 11th and 12th grade PE, all of the proposals that are here tonight? Uh, yes, we're moving from the full year to the semester. Okay, right, and then they have a choice. They don't, they not everybody choice. takes the same is that Everyone will have a choice. Exactly. Right. Um, all the equipment that's listed here, don't, we don't already have all of that equipment? Uh, we, have, we have some of it, but then there's, there's going to be Thank stuff. Thank you. Uh, we have some of the equipment, but we also, there's part of the, part of the course is going to be doing some classroom work as well, like just learning some of the mechanics, positioning, that kind of stuff. So. We're looking at you know, having to get some of those type things, some of the rule books and the videos and that type of thing. Well, 
yeah, you have like the teaching materials separate, but then then there's like the supplies and equipment part. I guess I thought we already had all. We don't. Have uh, well, if for the like, the baseball, softball, we don't have a ton of equipment. We don't really have baseball, softball uh, part of our current curriculum, so we would need to get uh, some of those items, uh, and the gear and, and gloves and that kind of thing. So. Okay. Thank you. And I guess you're going to discuss the next proposal as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be here with Mr. Rendler. Good evening. Uh, I'm here to propose the 11th and 12th grade team sports and activities class. Uh, again, it's a revision based off of the full year current uh, class that's offered right now. So this will be a semester class. Uh, it basically uh, allows students to select uh, a team atmosphere oriented class, uh, which I'm going to talk about versus the other hand, which is going to be the individual sport. But basically, it's allowing students to uh, get physical fitness in a more team activity uh, environment. Uh, any questions? Can I just add something? Because we really talked about uh, having students be able to make those choices. Some of our students don't really like to participate in individual sports. They prefer team sports, and that was the right, impetus for, for the proposal. Yes, we uh, since since we are going to. The semester class we're offering again more opportunities for students to select if they're more comfortable in a team environment they can select that class versus being in an individual class uh, an individual uh, type of sport uh, which we're going to talk about next are the students allowed to take the same PE yeah. class two times they can take team sports twice for their 11th grade and their 12th for their two quarter credit classes <laughs> <laughs> Because you know somebody's going to want to do that because yes, they loved it sure. so much. <laughs> so they just want something else, right? As long as they're active, we'll let them do it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's the right good answer. Any other comments or questions? Okay. You can go on then to the, the next one. Sure. Just, Thank uh, you. Again, the companion to this. Yes. <laughs> Uh, the next proposal, again, is another revision. It is uh, on the other side of team sports is individual sports. Uh, so we allow students uh, to select activities that are more individual-based versus a team-based, uh, which was the last, uh, the last class uh, that we talked about. So activities, archery, golf, so activities that they'll do on an individual versus being in a team atmosphere. So pickleball is listed in both of them, isn't it? Team and I think if pickleball was listed in the the uh, team one, I think that was supposed to come out. Yeah. Okay. But but also uh, pickleball because it might be smaller classes. You do individual. It'd be like instead of doubles, it'd be singles. So depend, yes, so depending, depending on, on the size the of the class. class. Um, like my, much like tennis, if it allows, you can do individual. So where uh, it would have to be doubles based or on teams. the size okay. of the class. Can you explain what pickleball is for those of us who aren't smart? About you know what? I'm sitting here, am I the only one who doesn't know? Okay. Pickleball is very similar to tennis. Uh, basically, it's an in, it can be indoor or outdoor. Uh, we play it indoor here right now, um, but basically, it's it's one of the similar rules to tennis, except you're playing with a wiffle ball and almost like a, a paddle uh, versus a tennis racket and a tennis ball. Um, the family that came up with the game, they had a dog named Pickles, and Pickles used to chase the ball around, so they called it Pickleball. A little history lesson on Pickleball. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else on this proposal? Not, then let's move on to the next one. Okay. Uh, my next proposal is for uh, lifeguarding, which again, currently is full year, going to be going to, uh, again, a semester class, uh, offering students an opportunity to um, pursue uh, being a lifeguard, being certified through the American Red Cross uh, to become a lifeguard. And again, talking about employment opportunities uh, during the summer and, uh, and beyond that, uh, allow students at local pools, at the Holiday House, or uh, at Menlo opportunities for kids to, to earn some money uh, and also to continue as possibly a career for them down the road. Any questions? 
So if you're pairing this from a full year to a half year course, what gets lost in that? Or what, what gets removed, I should have to say? Well, we basically follow the curriculum for the American Red Cross, so we're following that. Um, there's nothing really going to be lost. Uh, all the same, all the same material is going to be covered uh, in half of the year versus the full year. Uh, currently, right now, that uh, Mr. Wyatt's uh, teaching at full year, and uh, they get not only the American Red Cross uh, material taught, but they also do a lot of training, so a lot of swimming. Um, opportunities for students to, to train. Uh, basically, that would be cut down a little bit due to the time constraints due to going to half a year versus full year. Does this release time for anything else in the pool, or would it simply put pressure on them because of the multiple classes? No, not at all. Right, currently, it has its own separate time versus 10th grade applies. Uh, it has its own separate time in the pool, so it won't, uh, it won't infringe on anything that's currently running right now. Any other questions on the lifeguarding proposal? It says it's going from 90 days to 45. Is it really 90? Because isn't it only two days? Isn't it two out of six days? Two out of six days, yes. Yeah, so isn't that only 60 days? So it's going from 60 days to 45 days? It should be just like our other courses. It's going to be three days a cycle, not two days. It'll be three. Three days. Right, but it says it's going from 90 days to 45, so it sounds like it's getting cut in half, but it's really only losing a third. Third, of the time. third no, yes. 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 So it should be 60 days 60. going to 45. Yes, sorry, not 90. Right, okay. Because that would have been three days a cycle all year long. Yes. Two. Right, okay. I just, so it's not losing as many days as it sounds no. like. No. Yeah. And it's more, it's more time than the Red Cross requires. I mean, because you can take that class. You do it over a weekend. Right. Friday, Saturday. Right, and get certified. Yes. So I don't, I don't think we're going to be losing anything. Not at all. Yeah. OK, thank you. Sure. OK. Um, the last of the health and PE proposals is the fitness trends. Mr. McDonald. Yes. Um, the new course I'm proposing is called Fitness Trends. Uh, this is also a semester uh, elective course. It's um, offered to provide additional um, health and phys ed opportunities to 11th and 12th grade students. Um, the premise behind the course, premise behind the course is uh, for students to expand their knowledge that we and skills and fitness through a variety of resources and experiences that uh, we kind of established in 9th and 10th grade. Um, they will basically attain a core background in fitness while progressing to the point where they're able to establish their own personal fitness goals and then in a sense uh, develop and track a plan to achieve them. Um, a lot of people pay a lot of money for personal trainers out there and um, in a sense this would kind of make them um, achieve the goals or the um, skills and knowledge to become in a sense their own personal trainer. So. Um, Again, semester course and uh, offer to 11th, 12th grade students. Any questions? With, with all these new phys ed proposals, what happens if um, we don't get the numbers in some of these? Do they we just don't move forward with them or just because we have a lot of different ones? I understand that. I think uh, Dr. Shai might address that question. If they don't meet the criteria for enrollment, we don't know. We have 2,400 students, roughly 2,300 in some odd number, right? So we yes. have a lot of visit classes. That I'm sure I hope so. They're not replacing all of those, of course, but. No, and this is again the offer of the senior semester course. Uh, I'm sure I hope we will able to run a few of these courses. Yeah, I think kids have a variety of interests, and I, I think we're getting more people doing them in one year. Will they be able to? They can. Will it still be an elective if kids want to take more phys ed? They can yes. do it then as an elective, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. That's good too. So you might get some more students Repeat. wanting to take it instead of a study hall, or kids who just want to be, you know, have right. physical activity during the day. 
And this is a course that people can build on each other. Like they take it again, they're not going to get the same thing. They can continue on with their goals right. that they, they right. you know, set for themselves. Right, so this will be one that's more individualized, so if they take it again, Correct. they'll just be moving farther along and advancing with their own fitness plan. That's correct. Mm -hmm. That's great. I think it's great that we're offering the, the students all those options. Thank you for doing that. Sure. Yeah, I'm really happy to hear it. To me, it's like college, you know, how you get to pick your different phys ed classes, so it's exciting for me. Um, what are these polar heart rate monitors? Um, we already use those for cyber. Gym or visit? And would that be something that, that stays here at the school? Right. That that would be that would stay with us, so that's correct, during the class that we have in the school. That would not be going outside of the school environment. Oh, it doesn't leave. Oh, okay. Right. I thought maybe it would have to go home. Any other questions? Not. Thank you. Thank you. Guitar studio proposal. Mrs. Warner. Good evening. For the guitar studio, the inspiration behind that is currently there are limited opportunities at the high school level for students to study music outside of the traditional ensemble groups of band, orchestra, and chorus. And those traditional ensembles also require prior involvement in our music program at the middle and elementary levels. The acoustic guitar is the perfect gateway for a student who wants to explore music as it's not ensemble based, and learning it does not require knowledge from a previous curriculum, and it is a well-known and widely used instrument in a variety of musical genres. The course would be a one semester course open to students in grades nine through 12. And students will learn the basics of acoustic guitar playing through studying beginner acoustic guitar technique, the fundamentals of music notation, including chord symbols, scales, and improvisational techniques, performance in small and a large guitar ensemble, and a cumulative performance at the end of the course. Do you have any questions about the guitar studio? This has no prerequisites, I presume? Correct. Correct. And is, is there, will there be a requirement on the number of students in this class? Uh, or is this, because this sounds almost an individual type of thing. The idea behind the class is that we would anticipate a, a cap at a class size of 20 um, to be able to kind of work with students in those small groups and also uh, organize them together. 20 guitars is probably about the max you want. You're trying to coordinate strumming and, and uh, give enough attention to the individual cording fingerings. I mean, if students have experience playing guitar, I mean, it wouldn't be for them. You know, or would there, would there be a possibility of having different levels in one class? I think that would be a possibility. I think that if we offer the acoustic guitar class and the interest level is very high, potentially in the future there could be acoustic guitar one and acoustic guitar two. Um, but if the, there was a student interest in acoustic guitar, there might be a way to work in almost an independent study, but also have that student serve as a model and work along with the, the peers in their class as well. Right, so if somebody had taken lessons for a couple years, but they weren't really an accomplished guitarist and they still were learning, they could take that class as well. Yeah, so I it think it would be, be great to reinforce those fundamental skills for sure. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering, so is it with the, I mean, the music teacher schedules are pretty uh, close, so is it going to require another teacher or we're just going to shift the schedules around? Um, Currently, this I think just would require, and Mr. Master can help me if I'm correct here, um, maybe a shift in the individual schedule at the high school, but it shouldn't um, require an additional staff with the offerings of this course. I guess we'll see more right when the uh, when all the requests come in and how the schedule works. Yes. Okay. Well, next is the uh, music and media proposal. That also is you, Mrs. Moore. Yes, it is. Uh, this course, uh, students would examine the role of music and its influence in society through its use in media. 
The course would be a one semester course open to students in grades 9 to 12. And students would analyze past and present commercials, radio, TV and video game themes, movie soundtracks and scores, social media and websites, and how those media forms use music either as propaganda, marketing campaigns, themes, and or as a tool to convey emotion and mood. Students will participate in analysis, discussion, and creation of multimedia projects, and gain a larger understanding of the role of technology and media in their own lives. Sounds like a very expansive course to me. I don't know, um, do you have some sort of model that you're working from, or is this something you're developing from scratch? I believe if you have a copy of the proposal, there are some outlines of units. I don't know if that would help give you a little bit more specific of an idea of the uh, items that would be covered. But both music and media, you are correct, are expansive things in themselves. So um, we do have a general outline of how we would narrow in our focus for the class. So Carolyn, you don't have a model you're working from. This is something that will be organic. It's going to be written by the part. That's right. This would require us to write our own curriculum for the course. And is it something that's offered in other school districts that you're aware of? Or is this something completely different? Um, I'm Kevin Fair, I'm the band director here at the high school. Um, I worked closely with Carolyn on the proposal. It is what we found in looking at other high schools' offerings for music tech. It sometimes serves as a music tech three or a music tech four, and it also serves as a bridge towards uh, college level multimedia degrees. And it's something that music tech, in how we have it with music tech one and two, it does not quite go into the depth of how music relates to music's influence on whether it be TV or movie and things like that, and that is what students are most readily exposed to in their everyday lives. So it's a means to bridge the gap in terms of what they're exposed to and what they can potentially use it for in a future degree that music tech does not allow currently. Other questions? Um, so will this count as, the, as a creative and performing arts? How will it fulfill that requirement? Are they writing? They are writing music, correct? So, um, Dr. Scheid, this is a question for you. We haven't actually had that discussion. It seems to me that it would, but can we confirm that? Can we have that discussion? Okay, because obviously I'm assuming yes. the guitar class would. would, right? So I'm just wondering about this one, like what if it's mostly study or is it both? I don't know. So I'm just wondering, because that's going to be, that'll be a question that's something that's important to know for the program of studies. There is. Yeah, I was just going to say, do you want to say something and then we can just make sure that we're all the same? Certainly. Um, there is a level of composition in a basic format that does not require as much musical background as a musical ensemble course might, using things like GarageBand loops where it's pre-created, but they're ordering them and structuring them to create their own songs to go along with, whether it be commercials or clips from a movie scene, which that inherent arrangement would be considered composition or arrangement um, from a musical perspective for the national standards. So there's our answer. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, thank okay. you. Any other questions on this proposal? If not, thank you. We'll move to the journalism proposal. Hi, uh, this is actually just an update to the proposal um, from last month that was approved for the full for the honors level uh, full year journalism course. Um, we would like to go ahead and give it full English credit for senior year only. Uh, after speaking with, with more teachers, we, we, we felt that um, it'd be good to have uh, an honors level course with this type of rigor that's not necessarily lit-based. Um, we, we do have the, um, the AP course, as you know, 
uh, the lit and composition. And then we have Western Lit Honors, and then we have um, Brit 1 and Brit 2, but we do not really have something that kind of is, is more of a nonfiction and just a different, studying different genres, but clearly addresses the needs of, of, of rigor. So I think awarding students with a, a full honors credit uh, for their senior year in English, I think, I think would be appropriate. That's the update. I thought it was designed to be an honors class. It, it, it always was designed to be an honors class. Right, so but they, when we first proposed it, it was just going to provide credit as an elective. As an elective. Yeah. So okay, think, so this would this would count yes, as their senior year. Yes, if you this is your English, that's fine, because the, the intense, it certainly is reading and writing intensive. Sure. Okay, but students in 11th grade could take it, but it would be an elective. Yeah, I think, I think you want to stick with the, with the current world lit uh, or and or um, AP Lang as your as your English class grade. Um, I think AP Lang is still an elective, isn't it? Dr. Shai? I don't think it is. I, I just want to make sure I'm saying I, I don't think it is. Is that still an elective? We'd like, well, we'd like to Switch it? change the prerequisites going forward as we do the program studies. <laughs> um, so you can't, it doesn't really make sense to, to not get an English credit for taking AP Lang. Well, would it only be AP Lang or could it be AP Lit? Could it be either one? <clears throat> Usually, students take Lang in junior year and Lit in senior year, but some students want to do it the other way around. Well, and, and most would be fine. And here, most students only take one because it doesn't count as their English credit. Right. In grade, right. So we they like take to, Western Lit. We're, we're going to lift that prereq in, in terms of procedures at the high school and program studies. So that'll change for next year. Yes. I think that's a great idea, and. Uh, I also think AP Lang is good because it, it will help them the way that the SAT writing prompt is set up, right? They learn those things, the, um, the, the analysis of the writing style in yeah. AP Lang. I'd right. love to see a student take AP Lang and then take journalism. I think that'd be a, a unique pathway for them, uh, you know. Right, but, but I think encouraging students to take AP Lang in 11th Certainly. grade will yeah. help them mm -hmm. on their SAT writing. Oh, yeah. So is that going to be a proposal, or is that was that it? <laughs> just to change, just to change the credit for journalism right, as well as the update to the current proposal. Well, yeah, that I mean that's in the in, that's on the agenda, but changing AP Lang counting as credit is that I mean does that need to be voted on? I wasn't sure or? whether that was a uh, procedural call at the high school or that was a board measure. I wasn't clear on that, so that might be. Normally, the board would, would make that. Okay. Choice. Yes, I think that's, that's a great idea to come back. So that has to come back? Well, you well, know what? It has to come back because the reason why there's so many proposals tonight, right, for the high school is because the program of studies has to be finished at a certain time and push it back. So is that something that the board would consider without coming back with another no, proposal? I, yes, I would certainly. Would the committee kids consider that? I'm open to provide additional information. Yeah, we can put it on. And again, I was I wasn't clear on whether a prerequisite would be a would be a motion on the board or not. That wasn't that was, that, that's on me tonight. Right. These these typically would be voted on at our reorganization meeting on December one or sorry December four. Okay. Right. So that could be included, but I would get the information that was ordered previously. That's perfectly fine. I'll do yeah. that. Yep. Yeah, that you would just send us additional information that we could still vote. Because when the program of studies comes out, it's not printed anymore, so that no. takes away that time constraint. But it comes out in January, is that when the students start choosing their classes? Yes. Yeah, so we would need it because then the next meeting wouldn't be until late January. Very late January. Right. Yeah, okay. So we'll send, we'll send additional information. Just okay. show you what is and what we'd like to do and why. Yes. That's okay. That would be great. And then we can vote on it. That would be great. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, any other questions on the journalism? If not, citizenship and literacy in the 21st century. <coughs> and the next two is Mr. Smithy. Um, this course is actually designed um, currently in our in our 12th grade um, social studies and uh, English classes. Really, um, for, for students who don't necessarily have, have uh, 
college ambitions. Um, we offer courses such as practical English, uh, literature of discovery, and on the social studies study side of things, we all offer uh, political science and social issues. Um, the teachers of these two courses, who, who as you can imagine, work with, with students who are, um, you know, pretty much going to step from this high school out, out to the world, in, in the job world, or into a further training program, or something like that, uh, really feel that it would benefit them, um, the students, to have something that's a little more together. The, the, generally, the student population that takes these courses is pretty much the same students. However, we don't necessarily organize it like that. It just happens to fall that way. Um, so by allowing the students to take these types of courses uh, back to back, much like they do in the ninth grade uh, humanities, it would allow those teachers to work together to create common themes um, and to address um, literacy needs as well as uh, social studies and citizenship needs at the same time in more of a cooperative environment between two teachers in a, um, in a block format. So um, we're just proposing to do that in terms of offering it as, as the course where they would enroll and then they would be scheduled in one and subsequently in the other course. Um, so it would be in a block format so those teachers would be able to do that for those kids. Did I see it in the? I thought I saw in the proposal that they could still take them yes. individually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because um, some students might have work release, they might have tax school, so we're we're well aware that the, the uh, scheduling um, obstacles at that level are, are a little more difficult than say for freshmen. Uh, and, and again, we, we feel very sensitive to the needs of these students who are you know going to be could walk out of graduation and really be making some big life decisions, maybe quicker than some other students. We want to make sure we, they have the tools to be able to navigate uh, both as citizens and as, and as readers and writers. I think it's a, a good idea. Um, so the social studies will have the civics. There's a big mm -hmm. movement for civics. To right. That. <laughs> That's good. Okay. Um, you talk, it talks about um, discussing civil discourse, controversial controversial subjects um, and I'm just wondering what sources you're using for developing a curriculum for this. Well, it's, um, we would look at sources in terms of uh, discussion techniques and in terms of practicing civil discourse. Uh, we might look at, take a brief look at things like Robert's Rules of Order. Uh, you know, because the, the, the point of this is not necessarily uh, bringing up controversial subjects, it's to give them the, skill, the skills to be able to have conversations about things um, that, that aren't necessary, that, that are sometimes emotionally laden, um, uh, to be able to talk about it in a way that's mature, that uh, they, they come in with the intention of listening uh, to other points of view and, and being able to articulate their point of view. Um, so there's not necessarily a curriculum per se that we're, we're looking for. We're, we're, we're looking for skills. We can base that on the current standards for uh, reading and writing uh, and speaking and listening that are already present. And those uh, kind of emphasize those, the ideas of being able to take multiple points of view, articulate a clear and consistent point, while also taking other, other, other aspects of an issue into, uh, into account. I guess the point is I just wanted to make sure that they are getting both sides of every uh, controversial issue. Do you know what I mean? That we don't just give them one side of the issue. And so when we're developing the content for that, that they have resources available to them for both sides of every issue. Yeah, on, on many issues, and a lot of the, uh, if we would get into issues like that, a lot of times what we do is, is we utilize our existing databases um, through our library uh, for, you know, that we, we purchase that give many different sides to issues, whatever they might be, and allow students to pull resources that, that would be, you know, from whatever side. Having taught classes like this in the past, uh, I, I can tell you that, that almost all sides of issues are brought up by students in these classes. And, and, and again, I think it's wonderful because I think when, when they learn to uh, listen and understand that there are other points of view and articulate their own in a civilized way, I think, I think 